coming up on show 851, BMW just dropped a load of news about forthcoming electric cars. We're talking one series, five series, seven series. Stick around, I've got the details. Plus, on the podcast today, we're talking about a new Mercedes-Benz T-Class. What sort of autonomy future EVs like Lucid and the Chevrolet Bolt will have? Also, an estate car coming to the UK. An estate EV? Finally. I know I'm a bit of an old man, but it would suit me absolutely perfectly. Also, Tesla ramping up its hiring for Shanghai Gigafactory and why the current pandemic is causing an upturn in sales for luxury car brands. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. And here is the edition uh, for what happened on Tuesday, the 28th of July. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Well, thank you, as always, to the gang at myev.com. They do help me make this show. They have built a great marketplace. If you're in the US, and there's no point just going around loads of individual little dealer websites and trying to find the perfect EV for you, because it'll be on my EV. EV.com. It's totally free as well. You're not paying them to use it, and it simplifies buying and selling as well, EVs. Okay, let's kick off. You know what? Let's start with the headline story today about BMW. We know the iX3 is coming very soon. That's made in China, and that's exported to Europe, but not the US. So we know that there's a forthcoming i4 and an iNext. They are here by the end of 2021. Uh, we know that the Mini is electric and that there will probably be electric versions of the Mini Clubman and Mini Countryman. So what are we talking about today? A smaller SUV today. BMW uh, dropped a load of news, but the first piece of news confirmed is the iX1. It's going to be a smaller BMW. Uh, It won't be cheap because BMWs aren't cheap, but it will be smaller and it will follow the iX3 as the next SUV. They're going to make the next all-electric SUV uh, that they are going to make. Uh, The X1, sorry, the iX1 is, if it is anything like the combustion version which they make, it has the potential to be a very, very popular car because the X1 is. It'll be the smallest SUV that BMW make, but like I say, the, the fossil version sells well, so I can see if they get it right and a good battery size and good performance as well, how the iX1 will do. When will it arrive? They didn't say. Now, the I, I believe that the X1 had a kind of midlife refresh quite recently, so maybe this isn't going to be a kind of this year, next year thing, uh, but maybe it's it's on the roadmap and maybe we'll wait just a little bit longer to get the iX1 uh, but just brilliant news that a, a a full BMW electric range is starting to form here now let's talk about the 5 Series, uh, a car that, again, very, very important for the 5 Series. Obviously, you know there are going to be other luxury sedans on the market and um, saloon cars, and, and this particular segment is one that, for many people, it's going to be hard to give up the diesel or even the petrol, but they are going to go electric with the next generation of BMW 5 Series will be offered as a pure electric zero emissions model. Now, as we know, BMW's philosophy, if you like, is to give people a choice. So whereas VW have gone, right, we've got an electric platform and the MEB platform will, will be pure electric. The BMW philosophy is different. They believe in offering the car in any powertrain that you want, and they'll build them all in the same factory. So whether it's a plug-in, a diesel, a petrol, a mild hybrid, boring, don't do that, uh, or fully electric. Yes, do do that. Uh, You'll be able to get the 5 Series in full electric as well. That's great news because it's a car that as we know, sells well in combustion form, but also they can, it's a bigger platform, so they can stuff batteries in more places. Uh, They can get an impressive 0-62 time to get people excited about it, but equally they can make it very luxurious if they want, make it a little bit heavier, because a bigger battery pack, uh, more torque, more power, uh, will still convert into a really lively, sprightly car to drive. And again, with the current state of when the next 5 Series is due, It was probably going to be a 2023 model year, so we're a couple of years away from that. And it's, you know, 50,000, maybe 45, 50,000 pounds plus, and not a car for everybody, but BMW definitely forming here a, a good, comprehensive roadmap of what their lineup will look like over the next couple of years. But what about when you get to the top 
of the range. What about if you want to waft around in luxury? Well, if you do want to waft, by the way, if you really, really want to waft, the only way to waft is with electric power because it's quiet, it's fast, it's effortless, and even though modern, you know, six, seven, eight speed gearboxes are good, nothing beats the electric experience. And that is why there'll be a pure electric BMW 7 Series coming soon. Uh, this is going to be super luxurious as the 7 Series is. It's going to be pure electric, and it's all about, once again, just topping off their range with a car that. It just suits electric power so, so well. And it's a flagship car as well for them. So although they will still do the whole drivetrain thing and they'll still be putting the diesel and the petrol versions out there, you know what? Don't buy those because who's going to want to who's going to want to be filling up a stinky petrol pump in a couple of years' time when EVs are so, so popular? So full bev for the very, very first time. So what's that going to be? BMW i3 will eventually reach the end of whenever the i3 ends uh, but you have the ix3 which is on sale very soon you'll have the i4 the bmw i next they're, they're the ones that are coming next the i4 is kind of four series -y. then what we've just talked about the new uh, uh, x1 sorry ix1 and the electric 5 series and the electric 7 series that's everything from kind of 30 grand up to the 100 grand price point I think they're doing all right, don't you? I think that's a big bit of news today. I think that none of these cars are going to be coming in the next couple of weeks, right? So we're talking super long term here. But BMW, a company that just got their ducks in a row, is what I'm trying to say. Well done them. You know what? I know they're going to offer everything in petrol and diesel versions, and that is part of their philosophy, their strategy just buy the electric versions and the other ones will uh, will naturally die off much like the dinosaurs that use them to move. Let's talk about Mercedes-Benz developing a new small van-based T-Class MPV and that's going to be all electric. Now they're doing it. Mercedes-Benz is working alongside the Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance. This is set to go on sale at the beginning of 2022. It will sit underneath the V-Class and when you look at the current vans that are coming, or people movers, I mean, there's lots on the market this year. We're going to get onto one of those in just a minute. Uh, but let alone in the next couple of years, there's some really exciting MPVs, people movers, minivans, or whatever you, what do you, want to, what you want to call them. Uh, but a pure electric version, Mercedes-Benz T-Class MPV is coming in the next couple of years, and it will be all electric. Let's talk about what autonomy looks like in electric cars. You know, a company that I don't talk about enough, if that's the right word, is Lucid. You know what? Lucid, I think, are getting on with making the Lucid Air in a really smart way. They are involving the press, so they are involving the right press as well. So whenever I see them talking about the things they're working on, or a journalist has been invited to have a look around, the facility looks good. The people are great with a great heritage. They know how to make EVs, as in the senior management. And they've got some really clever technology, but they're not boastful about it. They're not spending every five minutes on Twitter pumping the company just to get investment. They get on with it. And by the end of the year, we'll know what the Lucid Air is finally like. And part of that technology is the Advanced Driver Assist systems, the ADAS systems now. We won't call it autopilot, but it's the same thing, um, isn't it? But we'll call it ADAS because really all of that level two and a half, level three stuff is all driver assistance. It's just very, very clever cruise control. It'll do a bit of lane change as well. Well, the luxury electric vehicle startup Lucid understands the importance of these systems and made an effort to go above and beyond with their ADAS. Now they've called it Dream Drive. Okay, I get used to that. First time I've heard it, it's called Dream Drive. And what's more impressive is they're not claiming what it will do. They're not making boasts, like I say, on Twitter. Uh, according to Roadshow by CNET, uh, many autonomous car startups are promising that their vehicles will be level four or level five. Now that means that you literally, you know, level four, even level four, is that you don't do anything, but you have to still be in the vehicle. Level five, these cars are going to run around themselves. And people are going, oh, yes, level five technology. We'll have that by the end of the year. You absolutely won't. Uh, we are many, many years away from that level of technology. But what Lucid are saying is that Dream Drive will be a full feature level two 
Again, I like that. Maybe it's a British thing. Maybe I like the understatedness of it. They're saying that they are working hard on getting towards a form of level three functionality with over the air updates. Look, it's really hard to do good level two autonomy. It's, re it's really hard uh, to make sure the cars stay in their lane and that they drive safely and they change lanes and they are a useful assistant to the driver to take the stresses away from the driver. Uh, so how do they do it? Well, they're actually loading the car up with a ton of sensors, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so hopeful about Lucid. Uh, they have 32 different type of sensors on the Lucid Air, and they're using LiDAR as well. Yes, they're using cameras, but yes, they're using LiDAR. Now, Tesla have for a long time said everything that you want to do with autonomy can be done with cameras and so that's the way tesla's gone they've just they've they've they have gone headlong into cameras and you know who am i to argue because some of the world's biggest super brains are working on this technology uh, but with an increase in the amount of sensors that come with the car in lucid what they say is they're future proofing it so that as we make these improvements they can do software over the air updates and if one technology means that you need to use uh, you know, LiDAR for something and cameras for another, they say that's the best way to go. It's not, not to put all your eggs in one basket. So that is their theory. The vehicle has an online debut on September the 9th. Now another company as well that's releasing the Bolt EUV, the Chevrolet Bolt EUV from GM will be the first EV which comes with Super Cruise. Uh, according to GM authority, they say that as General Motors gears up to make further inroads into the EV space, it'll arrive with all guns blazing, including Super Cruise, which is already offered on Cadillac models and coming up in the soon to be released Bolt EUV. I say soon, it's next year. The first full electric vehicle to offer a Super Cruise. Drivers can remove their hands from the steering wheel on select stretches of highway and Super Cruise initially launched back in 2018 on the Cadillac cars and it's been adopted by a few more cars in that range. Now it's looking like the Bolt EUV will indeed have Super Cruise, which I've never used personally, but people who have rave about it and say for what it does, it's very, very good which is interesting stuff. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if in the GM cars, if in Super Cruise, they have the driver facing camera, uh, but that's a huge part of any autonomous system or even driver assistance system. Um, th again, there's an argument about whether Tesla's way of doing it, which is to feel resistance on the steering wheel to make sure that, you know, you haven't fallen asleep, is the best way to do it. Now, others are doing this with a camera which faces back at the driver and uses you know, very clever facial recognition techniques to make sure your eyes have enough time focused straight ahead. And if that you are, if you're not, if you're looking down at your phone or you're looking around at your passengers, uh, it knows that you're not fully aware, fully alert, and it will make you become alert again, or it'll either I slow the car down to a stop or turn the systems off. That's a very, very clever way of doing it if they can get the technology right and probably a more reliable way as well than, uh, than just relying on some sort of weighted input on the steering wheel. Okay, moving on, let's talk about an estate car coming to the UK. I've talked about this before. Maybe I'm old before my time, but I love an estate car. You know what? I love the kind of sport back shape of a fast Audi or a fast, you know, Volvo wagon or an estate car. But any kind of estate is really useful. If you've got dogs or you are doing DIY or even, you know, even as a work van, even if you are an engineer and you need to put a set of tools in the back and just an estate car is good for your work vehicle. It, I, you know what? I've had one in my time, the, uh, the Octavia, and it was just such a useful car. Well, there's a bit of a dearth of estate EVs, but not by the end of the year. There's an all-electric MG estate coming, and they've called it the MG5. What are the stats on this? Well, 214 miles of range, £25,000 after the plug-in car grant, and it's got a 578-litre boot. You are talking my language. It'll be in showrooms in the UK by the end of this year, within the next five months. And it'll cost £25,000 once you take off the £3,000 government grant that we get. It'll be a rival to something like the Skoda Octavia IV, a WLTP range, like I say, of 214 miles on the combined cycle. Uh, MG 
have pretty good powertrains. Actually, not the most efficient in the world, but pretty good. Certainly up there. You won't be disappointed uh, if you had this car. And I don't know what the interior is like. I've seen some exterior pictures over the last few months. Not, I've not really talked about this car, but somebody sent me a picture of one charging uh, on the motorway near Birmingham. And I thought, oh, it's interesting. I wonder when we get it. Well, now we know. It's by the end of the year. The MG5 EV is based on the Row EI5 estate, and as I'm sure you can guess, that's a car currently sold in China. What are the stats on the battery? 52.5 kilowatt hours. It's all right, 114 brake horsepower, uh, DC fast charging on that, uh, probably the same as the MG ZS EV, which is, what's that? Is that 50 or 60 kilowatts on the ZS EV? But look, either way, it's the space, a huge space behind the rear seats, and just really, really useful. And I know what, I don't really want an SUV. I, I would absolutely, well, <laughs> don't get me wrong. If somebody wants to leave an Audi e-tron in the driveway or, <laughs> or Mercedes-Benz, I mean, feel free. Uh, but I don't really want an SUV. I don't really want to be loading the car, or the driveway up with a car that's so high because, you know what, we just don't need it. But an estate car? Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's move on. Uh, business Times in China are talking about Tesla ramping up hiring for the Shanghai Gigafactory and what it means. A new report revealed that Tesla is hiring for the Shanghai Gigafactories. It ramps up the Model Y production. Uh, the job posting is asking for designers and a uh, 1,000 factory workers for Giga Shanghai. A recent report released by Reuters claims that it's the first time that Tesla has been looking for designers in China for a locally designed EV. Uh, these workers in the factory will be assigned to things like bodywork, painting, stamping, and assembly workshops as well. Uh, this is a tweet from the user at Sawyer Merit, and this is a good sign that Model Y will be ramping up very soon. We've seen the big building work. We know that the equipment is going in, the lines are going in to make those uh, Model Ys in China. And now the hiring has started, and that's got to be a good sign. Let's talk about... What the pandemic has done for luxury car brands turns out not too much harm. Despite the decline in car sales during coronavirus, sales of Porsche, Mercedes-Benz and Audi have skyrocketed in Norway so far this year. Uh, the Porsches and the Audis, Mercedes-Benz all doing very well in a big, big EV market. Perhaps the world's number one, not by pure numbers, but by per capita EV market of Norway. So I wonder why that is. Mercedes-Benz have been doubling their sales, according uh, to the executive pri vice president of Mercedes-Benz passenger cars there as well. Audi having a sales increase of 76% on the year so far because of the Audi e-tron. So what's the pandemic done for car sales? Well, they're down, but not for EVs. All right, three more stories to go, and let's talk about Giga Berlin from Tesla coming along, according to a new report, coming together at a record speed. Yes, if you search YouTube, you will find daily drone videos. You really, really, really got to love a drone video to watch these things every day, but I've had a look at the latest one. And Giga Berlin is really coming together. Uh, this is a tweet from Elon yesterday on the 27th of July. Giga Berlin will come together at an impossible seeming speed, says Elon. The prefabricated construction method in Germany is extremely impressive. Uh, and it's true. I've been checking out these drone videos. And yeah, there are some prefab structures, big portions of buildings arriving on the back of trains being lifted off by cranes. Yeah, they're training them in by the look of it. And... Just huge sections of walls, concrete beams going up as well. And what is, as of a couple of weeks ago, a patch of dirt turning in to what you can start to tell are some pretty big, impressive buildings. Now, I've said all along that if this time next year there are Model Ys coming out of Giga Berlin, I will be blown away. Maybe I'm just cynical. And maybe I just thought, you know what, European red tape and... Oh, you know, bureaucrats. And we've seen how quickly it was done in China. You know, when the, 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 the government and, and the authorities get behind Tesla, they wave things through and wave the permits through and you can get things done pretty quickly. I'm not sure I would care to enjoy the politics uh, too much, but they can certainly, you know, if you're looking for a silver lining, you know, make things quick happen quickly. Uh, but in Germany, things are going well. 
Uh, I mentioned Cadillac a minute ago. Uh, a couple of podcasts ago, I mentioned that all the Cadillac EVs are going to end IQ or ick. They're going to be quite icky. But a new trademark does point to what the cars are actually going to be called. According to GM Authority, uh, on July 22nd, last Wednesday, some new documents were submitted for new trademarks. And if I look at the paperwork here with the US Patent and Trademark Office, we can see that GM are going to be making some cars called the Symbolic or S-Y-M-B-O-L-I-Q, symbolic, and the optic, O-P-T-I-Q, yeah, y you get where this is going. They all end IQ. And the Celestique, there you go. Don't know what those cars are going to be when they arrive, anything about them, but we know they're going to be quite icky. The symbolic, the optic, and the Celestique, all ending IQ. There you go, nice little story. Hey, let's finish off with talking of a van. I'm getting a little bit too obsessed with electric vans. I might need to go have a lie down. Uh, two different battery sizes available from the new Citroen All-Electric E-Dispatch. Not the first time I've mentioned it, but we now have pricing. If you would like a Citroen E-Dispatch, you can get one. UK pricing for my UK listeners out today, £25,000, because you get the plug-in van grant. Now, that is without VAT, of course. It's a business vehicle, so I'm not going to give you the price with VAT. But without VAT, with the PIVG taken off, 25,000 to get a van which is like the basic one is 4.6 meters long uh, the battery pack will do the bigger one will do 211 miles of range from 75 kilowatt hours uh, the side slide opening door very useful there's an XL version as well which will do 5.3 meters in length for those in the trade or for whatever reason just need a bigger van but it starts at 25 grand and that is all electric and offering plenty of miles as well finally good commercial vehicles are arriving and i'm pumped that's our show today thank you for all of your feedback by the way of the last 24 hours i was just saying that i've been really struggling after 850 shows I know. Uh, Adrian, uh, just the seven day a week thing. Now that we're a family, got a new little fella arrived, um, and he is just a ball of fun, but a, you know, a lot of work. And I've just been finding seven days a week a struggle, and I was just, just putting it out there. What if the podcast was daily, but five days, Monday to Friday, a work day daily? And for those people that have responded so far with your thoughts, I appreciate it. If you want to chip in, uh, let me know. Should we, would you mind if I went five days? You know, what day would I mention the patrons? And Obviously, we'd still do interviews on Saturdays, and so really just, just like the Sunday show that perhaps on a busy week I wouldn't be doing. Um, still after feedback, your thoughts. I, c I, can ha I can still carry on doing seven days. I'm happy both ways, but I'd just like to hear from you, the listener. Uh, my address is hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on the YouTube show. Well, thank you, like I say, to all of those people that go to the website, which is called Patreon. It's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash EV News Daily. That's my page. And on there, you can support at you know, $5 or $10, like a posh coffee or two every month. And you make the show happen. You allow me to devote a bunch of my time to doing this and to researching and writing this and putting it all together so that you don't have to. And if you value that, if it's entertaining or if you learn something, uh, have a look. I'd, I'd invite you to look, but no pressure, because I'll do the show either way at my Patreon page. Premium partners are Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, uh, Brightsmith Group, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, and now NationalCarCharging.com and AlohaCharge.com. We have a new premium partner from the 1st of August. I am excited to tell you about them. But it'll have to wait just a couple more days. Thank you very much for listening today. Hope you enjoyed it. I will catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>